Hey guys, Harry here from the Art Gear Guy. Thank you so much for joining me today or this evening. Um, <clears throat> so, if you follow me on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, you will know that over the last couple of days or a week or so that I've had up um, little snippets of the pencils that I'm going to be reviewing here in this video. And um, this is them. My pronunciation is absolutely diabolical with nearly everything that I um, that I review. So um, I'm probably it, I think they're pronounced Naoni, Naoni or something like that. I don't know, but anyway, the spelling is right. So this is the set of pencils now. Let me just let you uh, before we get into the actual review. I just want to. State something. Uh, Lindsay the Frugal Crafter, she put up uh, a video a couple of days ago about uh, a, a video she put out about uh, cheap pencils, kind of like budget range pencils that she was reviewing. And I just want to make something very clear uh, with regards to my own channel. It's I personally find it important. I think it's important that the uh, all pencils, right from the, the, the cheapest that I can get my hands on to the most expensive that I can get my hands on, with the exception of the Gucci set of pencils that are out there, because as far as I'm concerned, they are priced because of the name and got nothing to do with the, the, the pencils or anything like that. Um, so... Other pencils like, you know, your Luminance and the, the Dermot Lightfast, the really, really high-end colour pencils that high um, fine art colour pencil artists would use. I think it's important that um, all of those pencils, from the cheapest to the most expensive and everything in between, are reviewed and put out so that if anybody later on down the line is looking to find out about a pencil that they've either heard of or that... Uh, the budget fits into their budget and they want to know a little bit about the pencil then they can go and do so I think that to just review the high-end pencils is wrong and and not only is it wrong if that's all that people wanted then my reviews would have finished years ago uh, because there only is a handful really of the high-end colored pencils um, so I, I personally think it's important uh, and I hope if if you don't think it's important then that's absolutely fine. I, I completely 100% respect your opinion and f I, I try always to, to let people know in the description a little bit about the pencils before they waste their time and watch the video because I know that sometimes people will see a set, uh, watch the video and then go my god that was a waste of time but more often than not, I, I have a, a a relatively good description of what type of pencil I'm reviewing. And if you're not in the budget range pencils, then if I'll put that in the description. And if you don't want to watch it, then, you know, don't watch it uh, and just search through for the higher end pencils. If that's all, all that you're interested in. And like I say, there's no right or wrong. It's just as a review channel, I think it's important that I review as many coloured pencils, watercolour pencils, pastel pencils that I can afford to get hold of and, you know, review for you. Um, but now on to this set of pencils. So, I'm sure as you, uh, you guys know, a while ago I discovered the, um, the delights of AliExpress. And what I, I'd always wanted to make sure that when I was doing reviews of colour pencils, that I wasn't just doing reviewing pencils that were available in the UK or the US. I wanted to try and review pencils that were available in different countries that may not be easily accessible in the UK. But, you know, if I can get them, then you can get them. Um, and so AliExpress and other sites like it gave me this option and I seen this set of pencils a while ago and one of the things that drew me to them was that I 
like the barrel, and I know that sounds daft, but the barrel of this pencil, which we'll get into in a second, is very much like a lot of the Japanese. Now, I know this is a Chinese pencil, um, but the uh, a lot of the Japanese base pencils, like the, the Mitsubishi Uni and the Holbin, they have uh, a lot of information on their barrel. They have a lot of... Um, uh, they've got a lot of things going on on the barrel that is important to the the artist and the the barrel of this particular pencil from what I could see looked the same and so that's kind of like what drew me to them a little bit like when I was doing the Marco tribute pencil it was the packaging that drew me to those ones um, and so I ordered this set and when they came and I had a look at the swatch. I was blown away with the colours. So let's get right into this review. So this is the 120 set. They're over on the written review. Um, I will have the different sets that are available. And prices and links to where you can get them. Uh, depending on what country you're in and what have you. But um, the, the 120 set so far. As far as I'm aware of. Is the biggest set. Now like I say. I found it incredibly difficult trying to uh, get information with regards to light fastness and stuff like that. I have got a link to this to the website of this uh, company, and actually, when you go across, you don't need to read uh, Chinese to be able to see the 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 other products that they sell, and they sell like pastels and. Uh, um, uh, graphite pencils and lots and lots of other different things as well but uh, and this pencil here as well is also available in a watercolor version which I have you know which I hope to try and get hold of soon so that I can review those as well but anyway uh, like I say this is 120 set I was fortunate enough to be able to get the, the the largest set and like I say the prices will be over on the written review because the prices believe me are really quite excellent for what you get with these pencils and that's another thing that we got to take into consideration here when we when when i'm doing these reviews i'm not just you know i'm when i'm reviewing this pencil i'm not in my mind comparing it to say like the the current ice luminance or uh something like that I, i'm i'm equating in my head the price for this set how much each pencil costs per pencil that type of thing uh the quality of the pencil for the money that you pay, all things like that come into uh, play here. So, if you have a look here on your screen, you can see the 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 layers. So they come in three layers. I uh, I'll show you the swatch in a second, but you can see here the pencils as they uh, first appear. Now the first layer, as with so many of these sets, um, comes with. A sharpener and eraser now they're not high quality sharpeners or eraser erasers that come in these sets but never nevertheless they're there uh and i, and I guess you know that they, they help get you started sometimes these little erasers can cause more problems than what they're worth because they uh you know they'll make a mark whenever you try to erase it now the palette um, I, I really wanted to talk about the palette before I show you the pencils and the, the characteristics of the pencils. Of all the 120 sets of colour pencils that I have personally reviewed, this is by far the most comprehensive, the most beautiful, uh, complete swatch that, that I personally have um, come across. Now I know Depending on what type of art you are into, this swatch may not line up very well with what the you know the type of art that you like to do as a color pencil artist. But the reason why I think it's one of the most comprehensive and complete uh, swatches or palettes is because, and and I only have one criticism, which I'll get to towards the end, and but it's a nitpicky criticism. If you look at uh, the colours that are on here, there are amazing flesh tones. Really, really nice. Uh, lots of different kind of tones there for flesh. Um, it's not overwhelmed with one colour. Like sometimes when you get 120 set, 
it just it's bursting with reds or bursting with blues or something like that that doesn't i don't really see that being an issue with this particular set and what i really love about this set is if you look at this bottom row here these grays now they're not i would say that you know they're not called grays but these some of them are the the ones here towards the end are but these other colors here like this number 70 or sorry 64 70 67 65 they're kind of grays with a hint of like green or rose or violet or um gold they're they're just gorgeous grays now my favorite gray when I'm working with anything is French greys. I like the the French greys that are in the um, the Prismacolor range, uh, and but you don't see too many French greys in coloured pencils except for the the, the Prismacolor range. But there's some of the greys in here that would fall into that category, the French grey category. Um, beautiful aquas, uh, really nice selection of blues. Um, there's a, a nice dark blue as well here and that's I think that's one of the key elements here of this particular set is that the for whatever color family you're looking for here whether you're looking for a really nice set of greens or anything like that they've got a really nice light mid and dark tone in all colors so with the reds here you know you've got really nice pinks vermilion but then when it goes up to this one or 018, it's a really nice dark, rich red. But then you can come down to these browns. Now, this is where my criticism is. And it, like I say, it's only a very, very minor criticism. I think a, a lot of the browns that are in this set are very red, like ready browns. Um, there's not that many... Um, like raw umber type browns... Um, I think maybe if if it has seen because these other browns that are in there that would be along the same lines as a raw umber are a little bit darker. I would have liked to have seen maybe one or two lighter browns, but with less red pigment in it. Um, but like I say, that is a real nitpicky th um, thing to pick up. Uh, over overall, I, I just love the palette. It is absolutely beautiful uh, for a hundred and twenty set. And in my opinion, it is such a comprehensive set. It really is. And it's so complete. Um, the black in this set. Now, I know a lot of color pencil artists don't like using black. But the black in this is the is super dark. Really, really dark. Um, and when you kind of like put a, a, an under layer of like a red or a plum or something like that underneath it. And then you come in with the black. It's, it just, it really does... Um, transform the black and makes it even deeper and darker and richer okay so let's take a look at the the actual pencil and what i was talking about with regards to the japanese pencil so if you if you've had any of the japanese pencils like the uh the mitsubishi uni or the, even the mitsubishi uh 888 i think it is the holbin they have the, the, their barrels are very characteristic of this like you'll have a little bit of information then a little line separating it and then some more information um unfortunately with this with these pencils there's a there's a lot of information on here but it's just it's repetitive it's and there could have been so much more uh useful information put on the on the the barrel and that's really another minor criticism but anyway so the core is a really nice generous 3.9 millimeter core really really good size core the barrel is 7.6 millimeters so really really nice um size pencil it's a round barrel really well balanced holds beautifully in the hand uh very well weighted now, as we run it along one side, okay, so it says painting, then a line, then coloured pencil, another line, and then this N8520, which is um, which is on all the pencils, that, that particular number. Then uh, you have 
two rings at the end here and then you've got the pencil name now the barrel as well is um, exactly the same color as the core so you know visual identification is really quick and fast because the entirety of the pencil is your uh, pigment identifier on the opposite side of the pencil we get the same thing here it says painting oiliness the two rings and then th there's a uh, an alphanumeric number on the very end here which corresponds to the pigment but m my my point is where it says painting oiliness it, that doesn't really mean anything and they could have easily put uh the pigment name in there in two you know they could have done it in chinese and then in english um on the other side as well where it says painting colored pencil i i can i can see that and um understand why they've you know put that on there but I, I just don't get why they've done this painting oiliness on the other side now i guess what they're trying to say here is that these are oil based pencils but i'll come to that in a second um but i just think there's no pigment name on here and that could have with the amount of information that they've gone to the trouble of putting on here it definitely could have been uh put on the barrels the ends of the pencils are also capped as well, which you guys know I like. And um, all in all, the pencils themselves hold really, really well in hand. Really uh, well-balanced pencils. Now, the core of the pencil. So, I've done some tests here, like I always do. And... Uh, the core of the pencil is soft. The first two or three pencils that I tested, I tested them on... Uh, I actually tested these pencils on quite a few different papers, but I, I'll have images of those over on the written review. So if you want to see how the pencils look on different papers, go across to the written review. I'll have some images that you can click on in large. But when I did um, the swatch, it was done on the Clairefontaine Paint On mixed media paper. And for the first two or three pencils, I thought that I could feel a little bit of grittiness, a little bit of um, um, scratchiness in the pencil. And that must have been just a one-off because from, from that point on, all the pencils, the, the remainder of the pencils in the set just were gorgeous. Uh, really soft. Now, they do crumble. And... It doesn't take an awful lot of pressure for you to lose your point on these pencils. That being said, the the pigment concentration in these pencils is phenomenal. When you you know you just literally touch the paper with the pencil, and it's it's leaving a mark on the paper. Um, but you do have to be careful because, like I say. They're not Prismacolor soft. They're very much like... Um, they reminded me of a cross between the Faber-Castell Polychromos and the Holbein. Kind of like a mixture of both of those pencils combined. And, and they've cr it's, it's kind of like the love child of the Holbein colour pencil and the Faber-Castell Polychromos. Those two pencils got together, got it on, and then it created this pencil. And that's the best way I could describe what the core of these pencils uh, are like. What uh, The crumbling aside, like I say, the, the pigment strength is just out of this world. Uh, and that, in, in conjunction with the, the beautiful colours that they have in there, it's just an absolute delight using them. You do have to obviously just keep brushing away and you do have to just be very mindful of the fact that it doesn't take very much to lose that point. And it's only, you're, when I say lose the point, I'm talking about um, not wearing it down. It's not so much that it wears down quick, it's just that it's, it, the slightest amount of pressure will just lose that little tip for you. Uh, so it's probably worth having a little bit of sandpaper on hand because you know you're not going to lose the entirety of the core. You, so you just have to use the sandpaper just to reinvigorate that that sharp point. 
but they hold a really nice sharp point and these pencils sharpen perfectly. I sharpen every single time I get a set of pencils, no matter what size it is, I sharpen them before I do the swatch because when pencils, a lot of pencils when they're shipped out, they have like a little protective wax film on the core uh, and so it can sometimes, depending on how thick that little protective film is, it can affect how the, the first layers of the pencil goes down. So I just sharpen every single pencil before I start using them, uh, just to eradicate any any problems on, on that side. But as you can see here, we've got the uh, layer blend and, and odorless mineral spirits test. So we'll take a look at these tests here, and then I will do some of the I'll do the the odor odorless mineral spirits test live here on this video. So you can see here that the um, the first layers, I always do the five five layers, uh, but then the final one being the heavy application. Uh, but you can see here on the first layer, very, very light to touch, hardly touching the paper, uh, but there's still a really, really nice level of pigment on, on the first layer. Uh, all the way up to the fifth layer, and you can see the graduation of the uh, pigment being uh, applied the heavy applications here as well I would say that if anything these pencils are probably more they've got a, a little bit more oil in them than they would do wax but I, I think they're definitely you, you can definitely tell that both ingredients are are there but there's no wax bloom when it gets up to this fifth layer i could just keep going on as well uh the layering ability of the pencils is really really nice and i could um i didn't get any of that tackiness i didn't get any of that stickiness or anything when you start getting up around five and six and seven layers you tend to find that more in the waxier type pencils, the pencils that have got a little bit more wax than they do oil, or a particular type of wax that's used in it, whether it's beeswax or any of the other waxes that's used. Uh, over to the, the blending test here. Now you can clearly see that um, the, the third colour that is created here is clear as day. Uh, it's always a really good indication as to how these pigments kind of like blend and merge together to give you another color and with the blue and yellow here you can see that the green is clear um the yellow and red have given this really nice orange and then this beautiful purple as well down at the bottom with the, the blue and red so really really nice blending and again this test was done on the um clairefontaine mixed media paint on paper before i get into the uh, odorless mineral spirits test the artwork that i completed here as you can see here um this is this is all color pencil um and when i was doing this i kind of thought to myself you know what I, I i remember now why i don't do so much just color pencil work it takes such a long time and especially I rushed this quite a bit because I was aware of the fact that I wanted to get the review done and it's always the artwork that keeps me uh, behind with getting these reviews out because obviously the artwork takes a little bit of time um, and I and I try to rush them through as, as, as best I can. But anyway, the, um, the drawing was done on the... Um, Strathmore mixed media paper 400 series so a little bit of tooth to the paper uh, helped help the the pencil out really nicely and I and I would suggest if you're going to get these pencils that something like a Bristol vellum would be a really nice paper to use because because the pigment is so vibrant it's so rich that having that little bit of tooth there, is going to prevent you from needing to add any pressure to it which nerve which which in turn uh is going to prevent you from breaking the the, the core of the pencil whereas if you use a, a smoother paper which is going to maybe need you to apply a little bit more pr pressure say like a bristol smooth uh or a bristol plate um the the lack of texture there like i say it might just 
create a little bit more problems for you. But it's not it's not a big issue. I'm ta- I'm re- I'm, re- like, I'm really nitpicking here. Uh, but I was happy with the artwork. I was happy the way it came out. Um, I didn't use any odorless mineral spirits or anything like that. I just used um, the uh, blending pencil or used lighter colors to to blend these colors together. So uh, I was I was quite happy with the, the outcome of this artwork. Okay, so we're going to do this odorless mineral spirits test, and as you can see here, it's uh, I'm using Zest it. Uh, which I, I always use. Um, but because I've started doing this test a lot more, uh, I've just put it into uh, a water brush pen. Uh, it just makes it easier for me. But um, I'm not... I'm not very proficient at using odorless mineral spirits. Um it's just something I don't do, so I, and I know I'll probably make a few mistakes here, but we'll get into it and we'll see how it's going. This is the first time I've used odorless mineral spirits on this, so hopefully it'll break the pigment down. And you can see there, just let me zoom in slightly without blaring it. You can see there that the... The pigment is, is breaking down really nice on the paper. It's getting rid of the, 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 the white grain of the paper. And when I was obviously, there's there's quite a number of layers here uh, off this sphere just so that I could get uh, a good application down. And that's obviously one of the benefits of using odorless mineral spirits. For anybody that's new to the channel or new to uh, color pencil work, uh, one of the really good benefits of using odorless mineral spirits is, is once you start putting down uh, a lot of layers, like five or six layers, which is the reason why I do my layer test at five, um, that's when you would want to uh, apply your odorless mineral spirits and once you've applied the odorless mineral spirits it kind of reinvigorates the tooth of the paper brings the tooth of the paper back uh, and then it allows you to get back in there and start uh, applying more layers now the the that's when when you start applying your layers you know the the, the color on the paper just gets more and more rich and vibrant and it's some of the some of the really really good color pencil artists who I watch they can get the most amazing results when using odorless mineral spirits so when I say I don't use it it's just because I personally can't get the I I don't seem to be able to get the the techniques that some of the other people can get um, and I prefer using the the blending pencils. I think so, one in particular, uh, the Karen Dash blending sticks. I just seem to think that I have a little bit more um, control when I'm using the, the blending sticks uh, over the odorless mineral spirits. But there you go. So you can see that it's broke down the pigment really quite well. And then what you would do is you would come back in with your reds and what have you. And you would build up your layers again and just finish that off. But you can see there that it's... Um, uh, the, the odorless mineral spirits, it's, it's, it, it's broke down the pigment nicely. It's not the best uh, breakdown of pigment that I've... I've seen when I've been using odorless mineral spirits but nevertheless for a budget pencil and this is a budget pencil excellent results okay so as always I do uh, a t like just show the pencil off on black paper and again for anybody that's new to color pencils or new to the channel this test doesn't necessarily show whether the pencil is good or bad all it does is it shows the level of um, opacity or opaqueness within the pencil so in other words um, if the pencil has is really thick and opaque you'll not see too much of the black paper um, when I apply the, 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 the pencil 
if it's got a little bit of translucency, then you'll still see some of the black paper below the uh, underneath the, the layer. And like I say, that's neither good nor bad. It's just some color pencil artists prefer one type of pencil over the other. Uh, a best reference for this would be the the um, Prismacolor pencils are quite thick and opaque. Whereas the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils, they have a little bit of translucency to them. So anyway, let's get on with this test. So I've just got a, a red here. Again, don't forget there's no pigment name on these pencils. And I will have um, an image of this coming up on the screen after I've done this. And I'll also have an image of this over on the Art Gear Guide written review. So that's the red. Uh, that's actually quite translucent. So, you know, you can see the pigment there a little bit. The the red, or sorry, the, the, the black of the paper through the, the, the pigment a little bit. You can see there the crumbling, um, I think. Yeah, you can see there the crumbling. Again, uh, the yellow here, translucent. And we'll come into the blue. So the blue is really nice and thick and opaque there. So you can see that, oh, come on camera. You can see there the blue is nice and thick and opaque. So you can see, you can tell the difference between the, the yellow and the, the red there, which is quite translucent. And then the blue here, which is really nice and thick and opaque. You really can't see the black paper through it. Uh, and then the green... Again, quite, quite opaque there. Now, as a color pencil artist, ordinarily, the white is the one that you want to be nice and thick and opaque. So we'll see how the white plays out here. So, uh, relatively thick and opaque. Um, really quite nice, actually. Now, in this set as well, there are three um, metallic pencils. There's a silver, a gold, and a bronze. Uh, obviously, they're not called that, but I'm, I'm assuming this is what they're going for. So, uh, I'll show you what the bronze looks like. So, the bronze first. quite a dark color but it is it is quite opaque um, incidentally that color is really nice on white paper it doesn't look very metallic uh, it's kind of like a, a green ochre uh, next up I'll do the silver Uh, and then finally the gold. And again, with all three of these metallic colours, they they look metallic here, especially the silver and the gold. They look metallic here on the black paper, but on the white paper they didn't look so metallic, which is quite nice actually because I'm not a big fan of metallic pencils. But I know there are a lot of artists out there and some artists, some colour pencil artists can create absolutely beautiful work on dark paper with metallic pencils. 
But as you can see there, overall, it's kind of like a mixed bag here. So we've got a little bit of translucency and a little bit of opaqueness. Like I said at the beginning of this test, there's no right or wrong for this. This is just the way it is. And it's down to uh, personal preferential uh, taste, really, as to what you prefer. Okay, so that really wraps up this review here for the... Um, the Nyon or Nyoni um, color pencils. Listen, I said in, in uh, I think it was one of the Instagram posts that I put up, every now and again, you'll stumble across a gem. Uh, and with this set of color pencils, the palette, the price of them, the, uh, the quality of the pencils, the quality of the core, the way the actual pencil is built and stuff like that, everything just wrapped in is just beautiful now there's no light fast ratings with these pencils to the best of my ability of seeing and if there is any light fast ratings they are more than likely in-house light fast testing um, i personally don't hold a lot of weight to in-house light fast testing the reasons why i don't hold so much weight with in-house light fast testing is because there are two specific standards and they you know there's a lot of scientific research, there's a lot of scientific um, apparatus and all the rest of it that goes into testing and making sure that these pigments are going to last for 100 plus years. And that's either the, the ASTM or the Blue Wool Standard. When you start doing in-house testing, you can't, you can't replicate 100 years worth of light uh, un unless you put it out in the light for 100 years, that type of thing. Uh, the machinery and the apparatus and all the rest of it that, that goes into that is really expensive equipment. Hence the reason why uh, light fast pencils that are done in the Blue Wool or the ASTM scales are expensive pencils. But that aside, these pencils are perfect. Absolutely beautiful. So who would use these pencils? So colour pencil artists would just adore these pencils. Uh... I used lots of different papers, like I say, and I've got some images over on the written review that you can click on, take a little look at some of this, um, the tests that I've done on the on the various different papers. They performed beautifully on almost every single paper that I tried to uh, test them on. Um, the the pricing of them as well. I mean. It, for the for the price of them, you just cannot go wrong. The downside is that they are not sold open stock, at least not here in the UK or the US or Europe. Perhaps in China, if you walked into this uh, uh, an art store in China, you might be able to get hold of them uh, open stock, but you just can't get them open stock. So. You would, if you ran out of a pencil, like when I was doing this, I, I used quite a lot of flesh tone uh, colours. And so I was running out of those. And I knew that if I wanted to do another drawing that was going to need uh, a lot of flesh tones, that I was going to encounter issues. So there is that. In order for me to combat those issues, I would have to buy another tin. Now that isn't really too big a deal given the price. But then you've got the waiting and all the rest of it. Yeah, adult colouring book artists, crafters, people like myself who just love doing art for doing art's sake. But it's also important to 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 factor into the, you know, just because you don't have highly light fast pencils does not mean to say that you cannot always sell your work. There are ways you can get around that. Like if you do um, a piece and then you send it to a glisse print printing. Uh, studio they will be able to do uh archival printed out on archival paper using archival inks and all the rest of it may not last 100 plus years but it's still going to last a long time a hell of a lot longer than what the original might do with just the pencils so there are ways that you can get around this you can still create beautiful artwork with really budget pencils especially pencils like this that are so gorgeous to use and so inexpensive um, you're still going to be able to sell your artwork um, providing you do it in prints and providing of course that you let the the person who's buying the artwork know and understand that 
it is a print that they're buying from you it is archival but it may not be 100% light fast where it's going to last 100 years so long as you're always honest and upfront with the people that are buying the artwork from you you're golden you can't go too far wrong but these pencils in my opinion can be used for anything except for putting your artwork into um galleries or competitions that specifically require your artwork to be done with light fast pencils and um that's really about it guys thank you so much don't forget i do have a lot more additional information over on the written review like prices sets and all the rest of it uh links where you can buy these pencils yourself i'll also have a link to the actual website of this of this company again you know you're gonna have to translate it you can get you can download little uh what do you call them um plugins on like your web browser that will translate the the page for you and that's really about it guys thank you so much for watching this review thank you so much for waiting because i know i've been teasing you all a little bit highly recommend these pencils i absolutely adore them um i i just love them i i fell in love with them as soon as i started using them and i seen the colors the palette and everything else so uh really really impressed speak to you all again very very soon guys loads more reviews coming up so uh stay tuned and i'll see you all soon bye